This podcast has been set as an instructional video to help you use uh, Microsoft Excel in order to perform regression analyses. So as of late, we've been comparing two variables. So that is, we've been questioning if there's a correlation between two variables. Does Y depend on X? And if so, are we able to quantify that? Okay, so what you're going to see, uh, this note that you have in front of you is what you'll receive in class. We're going to go through specific parts of it, but afterwards you're going to have to rely on some technology to help you make decisions as to which type of regression analysis is most appropriate for a particular data set. Okay, so I'm going to scroll ahead here to Part B. And in Part B, what you're going to notice is that we are going to perform regression analyses. And you're going to have to decide which particular type of function, be it linear, quadratic, or cubic, or exponential. Okay, so the first one, of course, linear. The data is represented by, or the correlation is represented by, the line of best fit, whereas the other four are all curves. Okay, so I'll have you focus specifically on quadratics and exponentials. And this will make much more sense as we go forward. Okay, in class, you're going to have the option or the ability to use the graphing calculator known as the TI 83 Plus. You also have the ability to use Fathom. Now Fathom is good, but then again it is, doesn't lend itself very well to regression analyses. So we're going to focus on the TI-83 and then for in-class and at-home use, okay, this is the, the beauty of it all, um, that is of Microsoft Excel, okay, it's going to have you use MS Excel at school and at home. And a lot of these techniques can be applied or skills can be applied to your individual project work. All right, so let's have a look at a potential problem that would require the use of, or could require the use of Excel. So example two, I'm going to model primarily and have you finish it off and work through the additional examples to, uh, to hone your skills in using Microsoft Excel. So in this problem, we have a lab technician monitoring the growth of a culture by scanning it every hour and estimating the number of bacteria. Uh, the initial population size is unknown. So what we're going to do, or have you do, is create a scatter plot. Now in class, we can use the TID3 on the school's network. Under the math menu, you can find the TID3 and use it again to take some screenshots and paste them into your documents. Or we can use MS Excel and do the same thing. So the goal of this video is to show you how to use MS Excel, Microsoft Excel. So let's begin. So I'm going to pull up um, an Excel document. And in that Excel document, I'm going to need to create two columns of data. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this down so we can see what's going on. And in the first column, I'm going to have the independent variable that is X. And in this case, that would be time and hours. Uh, beside that, I'm going to have the population of bacteria. So I'm going to move forward and plot, or not plot, but insert the data. So in terms of hours, we have one through seven. And then we'll put in the population measures according to each particular time. Okay, now that the data's in, we need to create a scatter plot. So this is a, actually a very easy task with Excel. We simply highlight the information that we're going to be using. And under insert, 
let's go to scatter and scatter plot. And there we have it. Okay, just as easily and as quickly as that. Uh, with your graph, you do have the option of changing scales. Okay, so if you'd like to alter your scales, you double click on an axis and you can set the minimum and maximum values. You can change the, the units that you have as well. That is how far apart they are. Let's close that down. You can do the same thing for the vertical axis as well by double clicking. Um, you can alter titles, etc., as much as you need to. So if you go into layout, um, you'll see chart title, axes title. You can add titles to axes. You can add legends, label data, etc. So there's all kinds of things you can do under format. Of course, there are different things you can do in terms of line thickness and shape effects and outlines. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Now that it's graphed, if we go back to the problem, let's take a quick look. Draw a sketch. Okay, that's been done with technology. Moving forward, what we're going to do is do three different regression anal analyses. We'll record their equations. There are squared values which you heard about in class or will hear about in class and then make a decision as to which model is best. Now, the goal of this video is not to determine which model is best based on the R squared values, but it is simply to help you use the technology. So let's try out some of these regressions. Okay, so let's begin with, uh, although linear is not suggested, um, let me, let, let's go ahead and do that. So by clicking on a data point, and then right clicking, you're gonna notice add trend line. Now, what comes up is exponential, linear, logarithmic, we don't study here. Polynomial, if you select polynomial, uh, order two means quadratic and order three means cubic, okay? Power function, we're not going to be using, okay? And moving average, we won't be using either. So let's start with linear. Now with linear, what you're gonna do is down here, uh, do not set the intercept, okay? Um, you will be able to determine the intercept um, on your own using other methods. But we would like to display the equation on the chart as well as the R squared value. And by closing, we end up with the line of best fit. Take note of the slope, 75.6, okay? So that means for every hour on average, that is using a line of best fit or using this slope that there should be an additional 75 bacteria on the hour. Well, clearly that doesn't make any sense, right? With the model that's being proposed here in the data and also by the graph, you can see we have a curve. Okay, so therefore we wouldn't expect the population to be increasing at the same rate. That is 75 per hour. So what we should be doing is not accepting the linear model, but looking towards something that's more of a curve. So let's go in and try uh, quadratic, which is order two or degree two polynomial. Again, set both of these, close, and we have both equations here. Let's actually remove, delete that one, and we'll focus on this one here. So here's our quadratic equation. It has an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. Now the constant in this case is what is called the y-intercept. So you can see that by extending the graph upwards, right, using the symmetry in the graph, we would hit about 66. Now, quadratic models, as good as a fit that this one is, one would not expect the population to have been any greater than zero before, right, before this initial time or before time zero. So the quadratic model may not be the best fit for what we're doing, okay? Given the context, it doesn't seem appropriate. Notice the R squared value. So you can think about that as to what that means as per the lesson in class. So what we'll do is we can take this away 
and we can go ahead and test the other models. So for uh, cubic, we would simply uh, increase that. Display both, see how it looks. That looks fairly good. Okay, so just a note about cubic functions. Uh, cubic functions tend to have an S-shaped curve. So that is, uh, well, that's not going to write on here, but it will write in this document here. So I'll just insert a slide for now. Cubic functions have an S-shaped quality to it. So as far as this problem is concerned, you can probably appreciate that this much of the curve is only showing. Okay, so you'll have to decide whether or not that type of model would be appropriate for what we're doing. Okay, going back to our data, last but not least is the exponential. So let's remove this one. And again, you can make choices based on what you understand about the R-squared value. Let's go with exponential, and we will set both of these and plot. And there you have it. So we end up with this particular equation here with its R squared value. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this equation. Uh, there is something that I do need to, uh, to mention about it because we don't really focus a lot on these things uh, in this particular course. Okay, so here's our equation. Okay. Um, so this is an exponential equation. What you're going to notice is that it is in a different uh, form, okay, uh, if we can consider it that. So what we have is this first number, 5.6958, okay. If you go back to the graph, but for a moment, if we were to extend let me use my mouse here. If we were to extend from here to the y-axis, okay, you would notice here that would be your y-intercept. So the y-intercept value would be 5.6958. So that's your y-intercept or initial value at time zero. So here we could estimate perhaps five or six bacterium. Began our culture. The other part, the e to the 0.65, sorry, e to the 0.65969x. Uh, the x is in the exponent. This is why we call it an exponential equation. Uh, but the value of e, okay, for reasons that we don't get into this course, um, you'd see it in ad advanced functions or in a calculus course. Uh, this is uh, a base. It's known as uh, 2.71 is an approximation to two decimal places for this base, okay? So you could actually find that key on your calculator, okay? In fact, if you do need to use it, okay, you'll notice here, uh, whereabouts are you? Uh, here we are, e to the x, okay? So that could be used, right? when typing in particular values into your calculator. So that E then becomes, right, approximating here, 2.71, okay, to the power of the exponent, okay, 0.6569 to the X. What you have altogether if you consider just this portion here, okay, this piece here will either give you a growth or a decay factor. Okay, you'd see growth if the value you got there was bigger than one you'd see decay if the value you got there was between 0 and 1, okay? So that value for the decay factor, uh, oftentimes in other texts it's referred to as the letter B, okay? So the growth or decay factor in this case 
could be denoted as b. So if we type that in, just to give you an idea as to whether it's growth or decay, and we, we know it's growth because you can see that the graph is increasing, right, as time goes by. But if we were to calculate this, so let's take uh, 2.71 in approximation, or if you want, we could uh, take this key here, right? But I can't hit it yet. I got to put the the 0.69, etc. in. So I'm gonna have to go back to that to see what it is. 0.6569. Okay, let's just do this. So 0.6569. Okay, we're going to do that to, that's e to the x, we get 1.92, or 1.93 to two decimal places. So this equation actually comes out to be equal approximately to 5.6958 times 1.92 to the power of x, where x is the number of hours have gone by. So the 1.92, you can see it's bigger than 1, so that means that we have an exponential growth curve. Okay, Microsoft Excel simply presents it or packages it in this form where you're using the base E okay, in your power. So when you get a hold of an equation like this, that is if it comes up in your work, um, you'll at least know what to expect and to know how to use it simply calculate by substituting values in, right? Anytime you have a value for x, you would substitute it in and evaluate it accordingly, okay? This information here simply tells us what we can perceive as being growth or decay um, given the values in the equation, okay?